Hello students. Today I will talk about the neuromuscular system. As you know that neuromuscular system is basically comprised of three components. The first one is the first component of the neuromuscular system is the nerves. The second component, the third component or the last component is the muscle, the muscle and this is joined by both this first and th third component is joined by a structure, a specialized structure which is known as the neuromuscular junction, neuromuscular junction so both the tissue neural tissue that is nerves and the muscular tissue that is muscles those are connected by a specialized junction that is known as the neuromuscular junction so neuromuscular system basically is comprised of three components First one is the nerves, second one is the neuromuscular junction and third one is the muscle. So once a stimulus is given to the nerve, the action potential or the signal is passed to the muscle via the neuromuscular junction and then the muscle act as an effector organ or do the response by contracting or something else by something, some other mechanisms but mostly the contracting of the muscles so this one by one i will discuss the all parameters all components of the neuromuscular system first in this video i will talk about the nerves the first component of the first component of the neuromuscular system that is the nerve nerve or the nervous system is comprised of mainly a collection of huge collection of nerves or sorry uh, neurons huge collection of the neurons and this neuron is the structural unit of the nerves and also the functional unit of the nerves. That means the structural and the functional unit of the, of the nerve is the neurons. So nerve is basically comprised of neurons. So structural and functional unit. Functional unit of nerves that is known as the neurons so structural and the functional unit of the nerves is known as neurons now let us see how this neuron is constructed or what is the structure of the neuron so first we will talk about the structure of the neuron structure of neuron structure of neuron so here you can see the neuron is basically a cell neuron is basically a cell that is known as nerve cell so nerve fibers are as I told at the collection of neurons and these nerve fibers are one of the component of the nervous system so structural and functional unit of the nerves is known as the neurons which is basically a single cell that is 
known as the neuron. So this is the nerve structure of the neuron, a single neuron or single nerve cell. So here you see this nerve cell has got three components. First one is known as the, this part is known as the cell body or soma. Cell body or soma. So first part of the, first part of the neuron is the cell body or soma. Now, <coughs> the cell body of, or the soma of the neuron this has got multiple processes that means from this cell body multiple processes used to appear so we'll talk about those multiple processes but regarding the cell body first the cell body as a cell it has a nucleus so this is the nucleus of the cell body nucleus of the cell body and as it is a cell, obviously there will be the cytoplasm. There will be the cytoplasm. So this is the cytoplasm of the cell body, cytoplasm. Now within the cytoplasms, there will be some, there will be some cell organelles. Most important cell organelles are for example, the mitochondria. So this is the mitochondria. Mitochondria. So within the cytoplasm, some cell organelles will be there. Out of which one is the one important is the mitochondria. Besides the mitochondria, there will be some. There will be some other cell organelles like the Golgi apparatus like this so these are this is the Golgi apparatus Golgi apparatus is another type of another type of cell organelles present in the cell body or soma of the neck some of the neuron. Besides this one, within the cytoplasms, there will be some granular substances, granular substances, which are known as the nasal bodies. So these are known as the nasal bodies or the nasal granules so nasal bodies or the nasal granules and besides this there are some proteins fibrillar proteins there are some fibrillar proteins fibrillar proteins which are also present in the cell body so some cytoskeletal those are known as the cytoskeletal protein so these are known as the cytoskeletal protein cytoskeletal protein so what's happened in the cell body or soma there are nucleus there are nucleus there are cytoplasm cytoplasm and this cytoplasm contains different cell organelles one is the mitochondria and as you know the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell it synthesizes the ATP this also contains the Golgi apparatus and these are responsible for the protein synthesis in the form of the different neurotransmitters so Golgi apparatus are also there there are the nasal bodies nasal bodies or nasal granules And finally, there are some cytoskeletal protein, cytoskeletal protein. So these are the 
part of the component of the cell body of the neuron of a nerve fiber second component of the neuron is known as the dendritic processes dendritic process so dendritic process here you see these are the processes from the cell body as i told multiple processes generally 2 to 7 processes are originated and these are known as the dendritic processes so these are known as the dendrites dendrites which gives the branches which gives the branches and those branches are known as the dendrites and the main branch which originates directly from the cell body is the dendron so dendron and the dendrites so dendritic are collectively known as the dendritic processes so there are two to seven dendritic processes are there two to seven processes dendritic processes are there and this gives repeated branches this gives repeated branches which are known as the dendrites and this used to receive the signal from the post sorry presynaptic neuron from the incoming neuron from the incoming neuron of a nerve fiber this receives the signal that means signal is received by this part of this neuron from the another cell if it, it is the another neuron if this is the another neuron from this neuron signal is received by this part of the of this neuron so this one is responsible for so this receives the this receives the signal this receives the signal from incoming neuron from incoming neuron so this is the second process second component of the neuron that is the dendritic processes now is about the now is about the third process third component which is known as the ax axons so next one is the axon next component of the neuron is the axon So third component is known as the axon. So axon is the long process, long and single process originating from the cell body or the soma of the neuron. Single process and the long process. These are all the short processes. But this is the long process originated from, a, from the particular part of the cell body and this carries the signal beyond that neuron or to the second neuron so this whatever signal is received by this neuron this will be carried this will be carried this will be transported through this to the another neuron this to the another neuron so whatever signal is received it will pass through this process through this long process it will pass to the another neuron so this is the long process as so it is the long single process which pass the impulse which pass the signal to next neuron next neuron and entire part this entire component entire axon which actually gives a shape of a fiber that is known as the that is known as the axis cylinder of the nerve so this entire part this part 
is known as the axis cylinder of the nerve axis cylinder axis cylinder of the nerve now what happens as it is basically the continuation of the as as it is basically the continuation of the nerve cell bodies of the nerve participant this also contains the cytoplasm and this cytoplasm present within the axon these are known as the axoplasm so this is known as the axoplasm and the membrane this membrane is known as the axolema the membrane of the axon this is the membrane of the axon is known as axolema and the cytoplasm present within the axon is known as axoplasm and this part of the axon the, the part of the axon which actually originates from the cell body the connect that means the connection of the axons with the cell body this is the component which is known as the axon hillock so this is the axon hillock now within this axon hillock the axon hillock is basically is the part of the cell body but it is devoid of any nasal bodies so here no nasal bodies are there no nasal bodies no nasal bodies or nasal granules are there in the axon hillock so within the axon hillock or axon hillock is the very very part of the cell body which is devoid of nasal granules except all the cell organelles that means mitochondria golgi bodies cytoskeletons everything will be there except the axon except the uh, nasal bodies similarly in the cytoplasms in the cytoplasms or the axoplasms all the components are there in there all the components are there mitochondria will be there so mitochondria will be there the golgi bodies will be there golgi bodies will be there the cytoskeleton proteins will be there cytoskeleton proteins will be there different cytoskeleton proteins will be there so all the cell organelles which are present in the cell body they will present in the axoplasm also except the nasal bodies or nasal granules so now so what happen this long axon with axoplasm axoplasm is known as is known as axis cylinder of the nerve axis cylinder of the nerve that contains that contains all organelles except the nasal bodies except the nasal bodies all the cell organelles will be there and the membrane and the membrane of this is known as the axolema now here very important things that is present within the cell body within sorry within the nerve fiber of the neuron within the axon of the neuron that in some of the neurons not all in some of the neurons what happened there is a concentric layer of a concentric layer of
प्रोटीन लिपिड सब्सटेंसेस कॉन्सेंट्रेट लेयर ऑफ प्रोटीन लिपिड सब्सटेंसेस so there is a concentric layer of protein lipid substance substances throughout the axon in some neurons except in some parts except some in some gap part there is a concentric layer of proteins and the lipids which are known as the myelin sheath so this is known as the myelin sheath myelin sheath that means some of the neurons some of the neurons in which there are myelin sheath in their axon and those type of neurons are known as the myelinated neurons or myelinated nerve fiber so above the axolema there are some concentric layer of protein and the lipids throughout the axon except in some gaps those are known as the myelin sheath and this gap this gap is known as the nodes of ranvier nodes of ranvier nodes of ranvier so all these are the nodes of ranvier and this myelin sheath what does it present at the axon hillock and in the axon hillock it is absent in the nodes of ranvier it is absent nodes of ranvier it is absent and at the end part at the end part of the axon terminals at the end part of the nerve from which the axon terminals originate though at this part there is a no myelin sheath so except this part entire of the length of the muscle in some neurons has got the concentric layer of the protein and the lipid layers and those are known as the myelin sheath and this myelin sheath is actually released synthesized and released by a cell which is known as the swan cell so this is the these are the cells which are known as the cells of swan or the swan cells swan cells which are responsible for synthesizing this protein and the lipid mixtures and releasing around the axolema in a concentric concentric fashion in a concentric way and that substances that protein lipid substances are known as the myelin so myelin is synthesized and released by the myelin by the swan cells and these are the nucleus of the swan cells so this is the nucleus nucleus of swan cells nucleus of the swan cells this is the nucleus of the swan cells this is the nucleus of the swan cells so myelin sheath is actually formed by the cells of swan or the swan cells and the extreme out, outer layer this layer can you see this is the layer the extreme outermost layer extreme outermost layer extreme outermost layer this is known as the neurolemma so extreme outermost layer of the axon is known as the neurolemma that means in some neurons 
axon has got first layer is the axolema that is number one layer is the axolema second layer is the myelin sheath second layer is the myelin sheath and third layer is the neurolema three layers are there axolema above it myelin sheath and finally the neurolema but in case of some other fibers which doesn't contain this myelin sheath which are known as the non myelinated or unmyelinated neurons they have no myelin sheath but they have the axolema along with the neurolema that means the axolema and the neurolema are the must these two layers are must in case of myelinated nerve fibers besides these two one in between there is a additional sheath additional layer a thick layer which is known as the myelin sheath so what you get here the external to external to axolema axolema there is concentric layer of protein phospholipids phospholipids which are known as the myelin these are this is known as the myelin this phospholipid is known as the myelin so concentric layer of phospholipids that is myelin are there around the axolema which is which wraps the axolema and this is synthesized by or formed by synthesized by the cells of swan cells of swan cells of swan and these the nerve fibers which has got this myelin sheath is known as the myelinated nerve fibers so in this is in myelinated nerve fiber in myelinated nerve fiber in case of non myelinated or unmyelinated nerve fiber this part is absent and finally the outer most layer outer most layer of axon is known as the neurolemma outer most layer is known as the neurolemma so this is all about the third component of the neuron that is the axon so as i told the neuron is comprised of first one is the cell body this is the cell body second one is the dendritic processes dendritic processes and third one is the axon and finally final part of the neuron is known as axon terminal so fourth part of the neuron is known as fourth part of the neuron is known as axon terminal or or synaptic knob this is also known as synaptic knob so this is the part these are the axon terminals axonal terminals and each of the axon terminals is completed or terminated at the bulb like structure button like structure bulb like structure and this bulb like structure is known as the synaptic knob synaptic knob so this is the synaptic knob another synaptic knob another synaptic knob so axon terminal gives branches and each of the branch is terminated 
in a solemn structure, in a solemn form, in a knob-like structure, which is known as the axon terminals or synaptic knob. So these are the synaptic knob, and this synaptic knob contains the different structures which resembles the cell bodies and the details of this synaptic knob I will discuss while discussing the neuromuscular junction while discussing the neuromuscular junction I will discuss the details about the synaptic terminals or the axon terminal so this is the terminal end so this is the terminal end of axon which gives rise bulb like structure mostly bulb like structure and these bulb like structures are known as synaptic knob and this synaptic knob actually stores the stores the neurotransmitters and once the stimulus is passed through these things, these neurotransmitters are released and that neurotransmitter are responsible for passing the signal to the next neuron. So details of these things I will discuss later on. So this is the part of the, uh, the fourth component of the uh, neuron that is the axon terminal. Now another one thing I want to mention, as I told that uh, this cell body has got axoplasm, this uh, cytoplasm, and this ax axon has also got the cytoplasm, which is known as axoplasm. So this axoplasm and this cytoplasm is basically same, only the name it is different in this case. And as the entire part of the cell has got the cytoplasm, what's happened? Some flow will be there. That means there is a axoplasmic flow from the cell body to the nerve terminal cell body to the nerve terminal and that is known as the the axoplasmic axoplasmic flow or axoplasmic transport axoplasmic transport this is like another thing that I want to add with this so different substances are transported from the cell body to the axon terminal by a protoplasmic flow, by a cytoplasmic flow, which is known as the axoplasmic transport. And this axoplasmic transport is of two types. This is of two types. First one is known as the anterograde, anterograde transport. And second one is known as the retrograde retrograde transport anterograde and the retrograde transport so what is anterograde if the substances are substances are transported from the cell body to the nerve terminal synaptic terminal then that type of flow is known as the anterograde transport so this is the anterograde transport and once the once the transport is in reverse direction from the axon terminal from the axon terminal towards the cell body then that type of transport that type of protoplasmic flow or axoplasmic flow is known as the retrograde so there are two types of axonal flow one is known as anterograde another is known as retrograde anterograde means once the flow is from cell body to the nerve terminal and once the flow is in the reverse uh, direction opposite direction that is from synaptic terminal to the cell body then that is known as the retrograde transport generally the neurotransmitters are transported neurotransmitters are formed by the cell bodies neurotransmitters are formed within the cell bodies and these are transported through the axon terminal and remain through the axon and remain stored there remain stored there the neurotransmitters remain stored there 
and thereby this has to be transported. So neurotransmitters getting synthesized in the cell body, they are they are transported to the synaptic knob where it is re, uh, stored. So this type of flow is known as the antegrade flow or neurotransmitter is the examples of the antegrade flow. Whereas the some substances like the virus, like different toxins, important one is the tetanus toxin. So different nerve growth factors, nerve growth factors, all these substances are transported in in opposite direction that is from the cell from the synaptic knob towards the cell body and this is this transport this direction of the transport is known as the retrograde transport examples are some viruses some toxins like uh, tetanus toxin and also some nerve growth factors these are transported in reverse direction and thereby this is known as the retrograde transport so this is all about the first component of the neuromuscular system that is the nerves and these nerves are the structural nerves are the structural component of the nervous system also and nerve is comprised of the neuron a single cell that is known as the neuron so neuron are the structural and the functional component of the nerves and thereby the, we can say the structural and functional component of the nervous system. I hope the structure of the neuron is clear to you. If you are satisfied with these things, if it suits you, if you like this video, please share it and don't forget to subscribe it thank you